So welcome back to another project with Ink Drop Customs and I hope you take a look at the list here of the items needed and I will have a narration on this simply because there's a few techniques that need to be spoken about and it's a little bit difficult to write everything out and it's obviously that we definitely don't read everything we see on the screen. So let's get started with this project. <laughs> take a good look at the items that we have disassembled here we're gonna to have to grind off this notch in the back that holds this cape we're not gonna use this cape but we're also gonna to have to fill that in with putty and also this gap in the front that was holding the collar of that cape this we're just gonna keep as fodder and throw it off to the side we are not gonna use this at all unfortunately it's all one piece I wish I could reuse the underneath garment but I can't the face is great I don't like the hair, I don't like the way it looks, it's just one of the things I'm not attached to, and this, this I'm just not going to use. What I will use is that ball peg for the boots that I now have to put together. So that we are going to rob of this piece. Now the next piece, which is the arm, this is a built in gauntlet into it. We're going to leave it as is. Uh, it's going to be more work to rebuild it and retool it than to leave it as is. Be using Harley Quinn's legs, and we're going to erase these ridiculous decals off of here very carefully with acetone. If you work too slow, you're liable to melt that plastic or just ruin that product. So, work quickly and make sure it is completely clean of that acetone residue. So I have already gone ahead and filled in these gaps with the epoxy. I, I used a wet method of putting water obviously on top of it to smooth it out and sand it down. And I used warbler for the uh, undergarment but it just didn't work out. I went ahead and used a warbler to create the boots. Those turned out pretty cool. And that is a heat activated material which lets you bend it. It becomes malleable once it's hot and it's a very, very good product to work with. Now, the styrene is something that I used to actually extend the pegs on the legs because the legs from Harley Quinn had those funky boots on there that were glued in. I had to break those off. It would not come apart with heat. And they were literally glued in there and they actually had to, um, I had to break those off. So I had to extend the peg with a tube of styrene to be able to peg in that large ball peg for the boots. So my Wonder Woman has to have the big beautiful flowing hair. This girl didn't have it. So I had a piece from She-Hulk and a piece from the Drowned. I glued them together onto the skull and I created the one large wig. Obviously there were two different tones so I had to paint that as well. Now the clip you see here shows us the unpainted torso. And as you can see, there's no makeup on there either. But I had to paint this because I needed the legs and the torso to match in skin tone. So the next clip shows us the fully painted torso. And I went ahead and did the makeup as well since I already had it here on front. I painted it directly on the torso so that the hair would actually sit where I needed it to be. And that way I wouldn't mangle or destroy it while I was trying to reattach the head because I did super glue it on there and actually it is rather heavy so it does limit its uh, posability to an extent but as you can see she looks now more like Wonder Woman. So let's talk about paint because this is one topic that always comes up in a lot of the uh, comments or questions. And I'm going to be honest with you. This is what I'm using for my skin tones. It is acrylic paint. It is a craft paint. So it's very inexpensive. 
There is no one paint that does everything and paints on everything. That's why I have different uh, models or I should say different brands. This is the Vallejo paint. It's great for a lot of things. It's also not good for a lot of other things. It is supposedly a great airbrush a paint. Um, you still have to thin it down. And unfortunately, you still have to apply it in layers. I love their liquid mask, but I also hate it because you have to work very quickly with it and you have to pour it on thick. And all of these other colors are fantastic. However, again, there is no one paint that does everything. Choose the brand you want, stick with it, learn to work with its properties, and acquire the others that you need as you go along in advancing your projects. Now, as far as Tamiya, this is a whole different brand. They have their own colors. I only buy this one because I like it and because it works for what I need. So I use it to create that wet look on the eyes or on armor, etc. I don't use it on everything. So I have other like this, like the clear gloss from uh, Model Masters. Again, it's another brand, but it does a great job for what it is. It just looks really, really good. And besides, this is water-based. The Tamiyas are actually solvent-based. So it's two different properties. And no, you can't mix them. You have to apply them separately. You cannot mix them in the same bottle. The other from Model Masters is the semi-gloss. Um, I should say the matte finish, which is turning around here in the back of the screen there. And that looks awesome for clothes or skin etc but my favorite is this one mr super clear and this stuff is expensive the bottle is tiny that's why i have it so close to the camera it's actually smaller than the action figure it's 14 bucks a bottle but it really works well it is a liquid plastic that you spray on so Spray only what you need. Don't overspray because you're just going to build a thick layer. And it's really not going to do any more. But this is also UV. And this stuff really seals your work very, very nicely. And it does tend to uh, eliminate a few of those uh, blemishes that you may cause while you're painting. But nevertheless, it's the best stuff to use for even as a primer before starting with a, a color or a wash onto a base item uh, if you're going to totally change color then you want to use a primer now this stuff krylon it's meant for artwork it is not meant for your action figures this stuff is nasty and this stuff although it's inexpensive you can find it locally look at what it does it leaves a thick residue that if you have a really beautiful finish on your artwork the skin tone or the metal and then you spray it, look at what you end up getting. And I got lucky with this one. If you pull it out at the wrong temperature, then it's going to look stark white. But look, it looks like there's acne on this board. And this is what you'll end up having if you use the Krylon. So it's best to spend the extra $10 and get a awesome result and avoid getting this. You don't want to ruin a two-week project with this stuff. So let me show you what the project looks as of now. Now this shield is from a different action figure, but I just use it for, as a prop in front of the camera. So is the sword. But as you can see, the fully put together or assembled figure with all of the shading and the coloring is already starting to take shape. Now I understand that the uh, uh, underoos here are the wrong color, but I just didn't want to see them red, so I just used the blue that I had. And I went ahead and bought some other blue that I'm waiting to come in. And I'm also waiting for my stars to show up. And I'll, you'll see those toward the end. But as of now, those boots look really good. That warble it turned out pretty cool. It was actually kind of tricky to do so. But it, it turned out pretty much the way I wanted it. One is just slightly bigger than the other. But it's really hard to see in camera. You'd have to hold it up to your face to actually see the difference. But as far as this presentation... It's starting to take shape. So let's take a look at the other accessories that I made for this figure because the ones you see here are from the Mezco Wonder Woman. 
so they don't fit in her hand properly they're a little too small but they make do for what this presentation is So I took some Krylon hammered copper spray paint and I spray painted this Captain America shield. It was an extra that I had from a figure that I no longer have. I then went ahead and covered parts of it with a craft paint, a metallic paint, and it turned out really, really good. I used then other craft paints to add other tones to the actual uh, hammered copper so that it looked a little bit more like the Wonder Woman colors and it would be more uh, fitting with the figure. To me, Wonder Woman is a warrior. Unfortunately, they always sell her with a very tiny shield when warriors actually had very large shields. And so that is why I chose this larger shield. And as you'll see in some of the other clips, it actually fits really well and actually looks that much better than the little bottle cap that they sell her with. So take a look at the shield itself. We're using craft paints. We're only adding tones of color and it looks that much better. The washes of color add a more um, characteristic look of what the character should come with. So another accessory that I made was a lance. The lance that comes with the other action figure I have is really too small. So it needs something bigger. I do have the Sideshow Wonder Woman that has a very large lance. And that's kind of what I took the idea from. But I couldn't find one and I really didn't want to spend that extra money. And I had all of this uh, styrene tubing that I that came in that package as you saw in the video earlier. So I decided to use that and create a small lance. And all of this stuff was in that package. Now, finally, my stars showed up. And there was no way I was gonna paint all of those stars and get them all looking the same way. So I had a friend of mine cut these vinyl stars on her Cricut machine. And these look incredible. These are really, really well done. And that thing cuts like a charm. There's no way I could have painted everything exactly like this. I went ahead and applied a few of them off camera because it's so tiny, so close to the camera, I had to use tweezers. I'll give you a little idea of what it's like to apply them. So let me uh, 
pull the one star off of the backer here and I had to use these tweezers that she sent me and as you can see I have some even smaller stars I had to use actually the point of my exacto blade to pull them off but this is how small they are and yeah I had to use my magnifiers to get them close enough to be able to position them and I went ahead and repainted the underoos a darker blue so that it matches more what the character would wear so as you can tell, you just have to kind of eyeball it and decide where you're going to place that star and what configuration of stars you're going to actually use. And you can use as reference many of the other comic book printed uh, covers and go off of that. But this is what it looks like finished. So much better. So I'm going to leave you with some video of the finished product. I hope you liked the video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you did, give it a comment. Give it a like. Please help me grow this channel. Enjoy the rest of the clip. Thank you.